BBC Two has some pretty loose talk now. Certainly colourful, some would say expletive, but that's Edinburgh comedy. Welcome to Grand Stand Up here at the Edinburgh Festival. We're here to find out who's going to be this year's Perrier Award winner. I'm really excited about it, and I bet you are too. And no wonder. In a minute, we'll be taking a nostalgic look at the history of the awards with some lovely old archive material. At 9.30, we'll meet the judges. And at 9.40, we ask, what is comedy? Then we'll go live to the shortlist meeting, closely followed by the announcement of this year's winner. So we've got a lot to cram in in the next 40 minutes. Pull up a chair, make yourself comfortable. I like being comfortable. So Emma, what's the deal? You're not cool enough or funny enough to be the presenter of the actual show? Thank you, Greg. You just get to hang in a bar? Something like that. And what, what is this? What are you, you're the mayor of Dinky Town or something? You have to be elevated on a box? Greg. If, if I stand on that, I can be Clint Eastwood. I can, and you can be Sandra Locke. You're here to make me look good. No? All right, all right. Can I get a lager, a pint no, of lager? No, 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 we're not drinking lager. Why? Mineral water. You mean like, that I didn't win the award for last year, kind of mineral water? Yeah. That's great. It's on again. Over the years, there's been some very funny people nominated for this award. And one extremely funny person who hasn't. But we don't want to dwell on that. did, I, I, I think, you know, is, um, I suppose it made people uh, aware of you, do you know what I mean, where if you ran the clubs, because you just do the, the, the alternative circuit, whatever it's called, and uh, uh, you're just kind of roaming around doing the clubs for years, and then I suppose the Perrier, because a lot of people take notice of it these days, um, it seems, you know, that people sort of go, oh, he's the winner of the Perrier, so I suppose you get a bit more notice, and also if you put scripts in to people, they take more notice of them. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, instead of going, oh, oh, there's another script, uh, they kind of go, oh, this is the bloke who won that sort of Perrier thing. And they kind of go, let me have a look at this now. And they read it. This is the Perrier panel with manager Nika Burns in the driving seat. They're a tough, experienced squad of administrators and judges drawn from the distinguished ranks of the press and broadcasting. They're fit and raring to go. Amongst the big names to look out for are William Cook, the chairman, comedy critic for The Guardian. He's the hard man of the team. Gail Scott Spicer is an exciting judging prospect. She got her big break by winning a magazine competition, as did Catherine Allen, an amateur critic with extraordinary energy and commitment. Bruce Hills is the Jürgen Klinsmann of the Perrier panel, displaying all the Canadian flair he's picked up as head of the Montreal Comedy Festival. To be eligible for the awards, shows must be at least 50 minutes of comedy stand-up, review or music running at the Edinburgh Festival. It's just got to be funny. 
But if you're already a famous TV performer, you can't play. Um, let's crack on and go through these shows. The judges are now exposed to exhaustion and even danger. What are you looking at? Look over here. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Told you you wouldn't know these cameras are in. Ten of people in the audience. I'll edit that out. That's all right. And I've got to say to uh, any Scottish people in here tonight, I, I love you. I love you dearly. I'm not being sort of uh, trying to win favour with you or anything like that, but I find Scottish people to be very warm, very demonstrative people. Uh, when I was up in Dundee, I got off the train, I got like the welcome to Scotland and look, it goes like this. <laughs> not many black people in Scotland. <laughs> BPL is high on our barometer of groove. So hey, purchase a pair of jeans that are simply too tight and create a four buttock effect at the back. <laughs> and a BW camper van bonnet at the front. Church of England, they're losing thousands to the Roman Catholic Church. They have decided that in time for Christmas this year, they're going to bring out on Game Gear, Christ the Hedgehog. <laughs> Honest to God, you've got Christ, he sets off in a stable and collects disciples. I mean, he's got 12 disciples, he can do miracles, right? Dee, 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 Boo! It's your bugger, Romans. Bridge! And I come home for the Christmas break to come out. I tell my family I'm gay. My mother lets me know it's okay I'm gay by buying me a silver whistle for my keychain. Honey, you've got to have this. Now, um, all gays and lesbians are given these by the U.S. government <laughs> to protect you from gay bashing. <laughs> Mom, this little stainless steel piece of shit is going to protect me from who? A drunken marauding marching band? <laughs> Coming at me at night, I'd be like, hold it. I don't mind these Tory MPs shagging. What pisses me off is their wives. Doesn't that, that when the sex scandal hits the papers, it's always the MPs' wives who constantly stand by them. Doesn't that piss you off? Then you just wish once one of them would go fucking ancient. Behave like a normal person, rip up his clothes, shit on them, throw them out the window. Change all the locks in the house, come to the front door to issue a statement to the press. Piss to the tits. T-shirt, no bra. Tracksuit bot with a big hole in the cross. Huh? Just stand there swaying, saying he's a fucking cunt, you can have it. <laughs> Uh, does anyone want to heckle me? Come on, just, uh, just for... Not very good, are you? <laughs> You write a piece of material and you think, oh, someone will heckle me and it'll just be not, you know, he'll just say rubbish, but that was so heartfelt. It was a... <laughs> I just didn't expect that, but uh, it was like sort of a, a PhD on, on... Oh, the old town looks the same As I step down from the train There to meet me Is Pa dressed up as Mama Go down the road I look and there's a tree called Mary with hair of gold 
and cardboard cherries. Oh, it's good to smoke the green, green grass at home. And the sex counselor said to us, like, the best thing for us to do would be to inject a little bit of humour into our sex life and to act out those fantasy roles that we only ever dreamed of. Okay. <laughs> we got home and my girlfriend decided she was going to be a Roman noblewoman and I was going to be her big slave. <laughs> and she got me to clean the house from top to bottom. So. <laughs> but there she was, just walking down the street, singing do wa dee 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 dum dee dee doo well, that's not attractive in a woman, is it? I sort of like Leathermen, too, but I always feel silly wearing leather myself. I mean, they're so funny back in San Francisco and their little harnesses and everything. They'll be walking along the street going, yeah, I'm a big butch Leatherman, yeah. Oh, look at the puppy, it's so cute, you know, and it's fucking over, you know? <laughs> but every night at the guys, we used to do this thing, right? We used to take our belts off. We got encouraged to do it. This was a regular guide routine, right? We'd take off our belts, we'd bind them off the floor, and we'd sing a song about donkey riding. <laughs> We would, just lots of people, hey, ho, and away we go, and donkey riding, donkey riding. <laughs> Quite dizzy when I think about it again, but... Then I go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, put these on. What about that space shuttle? Do you know, I was thinking, I was watching it today, five, and it didn't go up, four, three, two, one. And I was thinking, great, can't wait to get there tonight and tell a joke about it. It'd be brilliant. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah. It's in the front of this building, the Guru Balloon. It's the fucking facade. I can't believe it. Anyway, so... I was thinking, it makes your mouth really dry, you know. Would you like a drink? In fact, yeah, I will have a drink actually. You can have a minimal water. A what? A minimal water. Just a glass. Not springy. Um, Phil, you were you were nominated last year. Did it did it make a big difference to you? Um, to my act or the way I thought about it? Or to just, the way to it increased it, audiences quite it? a lot because they tend to, that's what the Perry does, it focuses people in on a few and so my show was kind of busier but it didn't really change a lot in the sense that you, didn't, you never thought, hey, I'm now qualified, you know, it's just to certify that he's now funny and he can do anything, you still worry as much as you do about anything. In fact, it made me a wee bit more because you go, oh my God, I've been nominated now so I have to live up to this thing. And I went into a pub but I went up to the bar and I said, I'll have a pint of lager please and the barman went, certainly madam, and for yourself? I said, oh, I'll have the sweet sherry. My husband's outside parking the car. <laughs> He'll pay. I don't understand money. So in your experienced and considered view, who's going to be nominated this year? You go. Oh, who would you, I like to be nominated. Who will be nominated? Who would you like to be nominated? I like to see Phil Kay nominated again. Um, but I think, I mean, Alan Davis will be nominated, definitely. I'll eat something if uh, Alan doesn't win. Because he's on such beautiful surfing form, and what he does is, what is beautiful about all comics when they do it brilliantly, is he's got to the stage where what he does is funny. Anything he says is funny. Starsky Nuts was my favourite show. I used to think it was brilliant, Starsky Nuts. And then they re-ran it last year, turns out, part of old cack. <laughs> He's good, he's on board, but I mean, so is Jeff, and so is Owen, and so are the other people. And it's up to, I you think know, Alan those nice people. Quality. We could debate and, it forever. You, know, you were nominated twice, you won once. Did it, did it make a big difference to you? Absolutely downhill from then. And, you know, I've done nothing since then. It's all been a bit tragic. I'm, I'm, I'm the big issue seller of the month this week, so I'm quite excited about that. Donny, you were nominated last year. Did it do anything? I don't know if it was the Perry Award or whether it was just getting better as it, as it, you know, at the same time. But I mean, I've been to Australia and Canada this year and I've had a bloody laugh. <laughs> and I have that to get up in the morning, so fair enough. Fair play to me. But I tell you what I think it is, is that what happens is that when you, when, when you, when you do comedies, which correct me if I'm wrong, but what happens is bits of the set... You're wrong, mate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you always were a bit previous, weren't you? Bangs, ah, and that's it, sleep, cigarette. The thing is, you go there and bits of the set go doof, 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 and that's absolutely fantastic. And then bits of it just go... <laughs> And what happens when you begin to really get it is August, woof, 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 and you really start to surf. And then what the Perrier people come along is they come along and they say, we discovered them, which actually drives out the wall. I'm but not criticising Actually, I was, but the it's night a... before the awards were announced, I was like in bed, I woke up just like, please don't let me win because the pressure is huge. You're not allowed to be just funny anymore. You've got to be some kind of comedy genius. And I... What do you think? Who are you going for? Well, uh, Alan uh, Davis. Alan Davis for me. I... Yeah, played cricket with Alan Davis, and he's a very uh, funny cricketer, very amusing. Well, I think Harry, maybe Harry Hill, he's certainly the boldest of the... Hey, 
what an exciting Edinburgh festival this is. And look who I've got as my studio guest, Joe Brand. Joe, welcome. Thank you, Norman. Nice to be here. We've been out and about. We've been looking at a lot of comedians, and uh, we've come up with a, a couple of clips here. Just have a look at these and see what you, see what you think. Coming up right now. That is fantastic yeah. movement. Oh, look. That lad, oh, that lad there. Full of surprises, Joe. Sick as a parrot, Extraordinary. Norman. Look, he's gone there. Extraordinary He's stuff. gone down, the boy's yeah. gone down. Extraordinary. Look at that haircut, though, Norman. Yeah, very good. He's going, he's going. He's gone He's going, too. he's gone. That's it now. The boy's down, Norman. I know, what do we do now? I mean, we wait, and then there they come again. Up he comes, the legs are up, legs around the neck. Away goes again, they part and disappear. It's a lovely movement. They say that laughter is the best medicine, and I really believe that. And if I've made just one of you forget your problems tonight and laugh just a little bit, that's a pretty shitty percentage. Um, <laughs> but if I have, it's been my pleasure. And if I've offended anybody with my choice of language and my material tonight, tough shit, you'll get over it. Um, Lovely bit of swearing there. Oh, I love a bit of swearing, I do, Norman. Well, I'm sorry I have to disagree with you on that one, Joe. I think that's a yellow card offence as far as I'm concerned. OK, now, we've been looking at all the subject matter of all the comedians and we've noticed that aeroplane travel seems to be top of the list. Have a look at this. Coming up now. 22 hours to get to Australia. That is not a short period of time sitting in a chair, is it? 22 hours is far too long. And then 26 hours coming back, which made no sense to me at all. <laughs> Was it uphill or something? What sort of... They said we're going into the wind. I thought, shut up. It's a jumbo, isn't it? I've been down on the coast when it's a bit breezy and you can hardly walk, but usually getting in a car solves that. They give you these on planes as well, these little bottles, don't they? They're rather fun to take to parties where they've said, uh, bring a bottle. <laughs> they've got grooves in the back as well, and they stack, which is a really neat, neat feature of them. Here's, uh, here's some I've stacked earlier, though. <laughs> and stuck together, and you've got to fill your leisure time, haven't you? Don't you? No, where was I? Oh yes, I'm on the plane. I'm fucking on the plane, and I'm having a smashing journey because simply because you're you're on the plane. And but it was slightly marred by the woman sitting two seats across me. Right, she's sitting by the window. Right, she's got the window seat. Right, and I always I, they always give me an aisle seat because they say what kind of seat would you like? And I go I'll. I'm about to say I'll have a window seat, but they go I'll. You know, it's tricky the people there. They trick you at the checkout desk. You know, I come up and they go Oh, Mr. K. And I go Ah. Anyway. So, so I was sitting in there on the aisle seat with plenty of leg room, you know, which is within 40 feet, but who's got a left leg that long, you know what I mean? I don't see anyone on the train going, well, aisle seat to me, thanks, aisle seat, I'll have an aisle seat. Or if he had a window seat, man, he'd put his leg out the window, <laughs> flapping around the back. I'm not sponsored, this is just my nickname. <laughs> And uh, I was on the plane, and you know the way people from this part of the world don't like to complain very much? I mean, if you've got hair, and you go into a barber's, and you get your hair cut, and the barber makes a mess of it and says, how does that feel? You always go, ah, oh, that's grand. And <laughs> you give him a tip and some chewing gum or whatever. You just don't complain. And likewise, I was on this plane, I was going to America, and the air hostess came over to me, and she said, where are you from? And I said, I'm Irish. And she said, oh, you'll be needing this, so. And she left the drinks trolley down beside me. <laughs> Look, I was outraged by the stereotyping, but uh, I didn't complain. <laughs> So there we are, Joe, a lot of aeroplane stuff there. Why, why do you think that is? Why is it so popular? Well, I think perhaps because there are quite a few aeroplanes is, is the answer there. Good uh, point. Find, Norman. I'll take your point there. But there's a lot of people doing it. I mean, they're, they're just travelling a lot on planes and finding that they'll... Well, this is good, something to talk about here. That's... Basically, they're showing off. Norman, they're saying yeah. I've been on a plane and I don't like comedians to show off, no. you know. All right, so they earn a bit of money, they occasionally go on a plane, big deal. You know what's weird about plane crashes when you watch the news and they say that the bodies have to be identified by the dental records? Because if they don't know who you are, how the fuck do they know who your dentist is? Now I'll tell you what I really like. Joe, I'm really going to have to stop you. Well, I don't know. I mean, I was really surprised when Joe Brandon didn't win it, and I think after that... Isn't that, that ridiculous, when isn't I'm, that? I mean, you know, why? And because she is the best. Oh, well, yeah, well, she's just, well, commercially, just, like, one of the most successful top female comic, and yet why, that... I just found that makes me think a woman's not going to win it. Do you, you think, do you think there is some sort of agenda which stops women 
being nominated. They're not that good, are they? I think that's the worst. Yeah, one. I mean, women are boring. You know, they go and talk about the pants all the time. No, well, I'm, I'm obviously joking. It's, no, women have to be. Uh, women have to be funny. They have to have something different. There's a lot of average hey, male so the men. No, no, there no, no, no. Far, there are a lot the reason of why there are half a dozen the reason why there are half a dozen female comics working regularly in this shit. country just now is because you have to be good. You have to have something special. Hey, but on the other hand. There are a lot of really crap women comedians getting regular work. A lot of them. Like who? I'm not going to name names. I'm, I'm not on this a show couple. to hurt people apart from my life. A couple? And there's more than a couple. Very Alan. Look his favourite. Look his favourite. Is he? I don't know. Well, like, what are people saying Owen to me? They say no. Owen. No. keep coming up to me and saying You keep saying Owen. Owen. Yeah. What about Green? No. Actually, too young. Too young. Too young? Well, for my age. Oh, well. <laughs> but Jeff's older than Alan, though, isn't he? Alan's too young. Jeff's, Jeff's about... Yeah, yeah. No, I, th I think Jeff's excellent though, but... Yeah. I think comedy yeah. should be about... And the one problem with alcohol for me, I don't know if you have this, I hate the way it sort of drip feeds your memory back to you the next day. <laughs> no, I can bloody do without that, can't you? So you wake up and it's like, I never said that. <laughs> never tells you how interesting you were at alcohol, does it? You sort of wake up and think, you were an asset to that party. It's amazing how much you know on drink. You had Ireland, Rwanda, Bosnia, all sorted out. It's a shame there was no one at that party to write it down. Could have saved a lot of people at the UN a lot of time and trouble. Now you wake up and you think, I never got my dick out, did I? It's all men this year, it's a bit odd. It's a bit like a, a list of a football team or something instead. I don't know. I think I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I can't understand. I think it's something to do with that big question of men being funny. And, I mean, they are funnier though, aren't they? I mean, women aren't funny. Funny. I mean, look at us. Yeah, I mean, funny. <laughs> <laughs> I am single, but I don't actually have a big problem with that, except for one thing, and that's when I'm forced to attend family weddings. It's so shit, because I'm sitting on my own, and all the older relatives always come up and patronise me and go, Oh, don't worry, you'll be next. You'll be next. I hate that. Mind you, I get my own back at funerals. <laughs> <laughs> I was being interviewed on ABC Drive Time Radio, which is like the BBC, but even more boring, uh, by this radical feminist separatist journalist, and I think a lot of radical feminist Japanese journalists are like that because they haven't had sex for so long. Everything's just clamped shut. They're like, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> and they all live in Melbourne and London, and that's why they speak like that. <laughs> so, you know, everything will shut up in the cold, won't it? So she says to me, I'd, <laughs> she said, I'd like to say, Tracy, I think your material's very PC. And this is six o'clock at night and it's drive time, and all the suits are driving home in their Volvos, going, well, she's not very bloody amusing. And I'm thinking, PC. And I've never heard the term PC. And all of a sudden I said, what's a personal computer got to do with my show? <laughs> here we are live at the Balmoral Hotel. And in this room here, the judges right now are making their decisions on the shortlist for the coveted Perrier Award. It's highly confidential, of course, and we're not allowed in but I'll be here to give you the news the minute the nominations are made. Well, not that actual minute, but the minute after that, because I'm not allowed in them by the time the news reaches me. We'll have to wait until that minute before I get the news. We may go into the third minute. So just, just to conclude this meeting, the shortlist for the Perry Award for 1994 is Alan Davis, Harry Hill, Owen O'Neill, Lena and Woodley, Robert Schumann and Jeff Green. This is the press school where all the finalists come along and have their photographs taken. It's quite exciting here. At the moment on stage is Harry Hill having his pictures taken. And they've all been photographed with the actual Perrier Award individually, so the pictures can be rushed to press as soon as the announcement is made. It's really exciting stuff. It's a thrill for me. There's still everything to play for in comedy's match of the year. But by Saturday, one of the finalists will be laughing all the way to the bank with a cheque for £3,000. Here's a look at the lineup. 